So apart from the hexa hexagonal uh, surface, it's the same. So for the first step, I can do a little bit summary. Uh, we don't. We didn't expect that the order parameter was very effective. It presents a unique way to describe the surface of the ice. As I can tell you, the ice surface is very orderly without phase transition. In other words, I expectedly the ice surface is even uh, orderly than you thought. You just uh, put your hand on it and arrange it. So it's not like the surface of other semiconductors. Uh, you just use your hands to put the pro protons. So in the second step, we are even uh, more ambitious. We talk about the ice disruption. If you pre-melt it, how does the surface melt? And this is also a project of uh, Dr. Pan uh, in the Nature Materials in 2011. As we can see, we have many vacancies on the ice surface. So we want to study the formation of the uh, vacancy, how much the energy of the vacancy is. And the layer one is the surface level. Layer two is the subsurface, the second level. So we go to this level uh, that is uh, going inside the bulk ice. As for the surface energy, the formation energy, uh, which is uh, to form the vacancy, we see a very large deviation on the surface. So when we're going to the inside of the bulk ice, it becomes very small. So from surface to inside, the formation energy is uh, becoming more and more difficult. Uh, it becomes more and more difficult to form a vacancy on the surface. Uh, you can form a vacancy very easily, but inside, you are binded uh, from every direction. So I want to tell you, why is uh, the deviation so large in the formation of uh, surface energy? What is even more interesting is that 10% of the surface energy is even weaker than the hydrogen bond. So you can imagine there are lots of uh, vacancies on the surface, much more than you think. Besides that, I uh, compared with the uh, amorphous ice in the inside the bulk ice, I compared with the non-crystal uh, ice surface, and it is the same. So we want to study what the physics uh, dynamics is. So we use uh, the dipole moment to study it. This phenomenon is very interesting. There is a correlation between them. The basic correlation is that the weakly bonded molecular uh, is uh, related to the small dipole moment. It's very small. So people will ask, you have the same surfaces, but how come that there is uh, so big deviation with the uh, uh, same surfaces? But it's not like that. We can use different colors to uh, uh, represent the surface in this uh, topological uh, picture. And for the local environment, we can take out the four water molecules, and the four molecules form a local electron field. And these three are positive, and these three are negative. So the lo local uh, electric field is pointing this direction. For the dipole moment, you can see it's directing to uh, this place. And for the two nucleus, they are positive. For the two hydrogen uh, molecules, they are negative. So you can see it's against the field. And under these circumstances, the dipole is very low, which is represented in red color. And let's look at another water molecule. It's this one. We take it out, and we can see the dipole is directing to this place, and it's positive. The average uh, local uh, field is pointing this direction, and it is the same direction with the uh, central uh, concentration of the water molecule with higher dipole, namely the gray color. So for the surface of the same bulk ice, the local electric field will have an impact on the dipole change. So it represents a totally different uh, physics uh, dynamics. So uh, let me put a formula like this. We have a water molecule here. 
uh, or other atom here falling on the surface. On the first step, it takes out the water molecule from this place and uh, put it back to the trapped place. And this is what the formula represents. There are all kinds of uh, smaller molecules. For for example, this is hydrogen sulfur. And this uh, relates to hydrogen chloride. And this is uh, hydrogen fluoride. So from this point, you can see these two things are more active than the ice. So once they fall onto the surface of the ice, they can take the water molecule out from the ice surface, and they themselves will fall down. So in the uh, upper place, it's uh, very active. But it, did not, it doesn't work. And this will not uh, substitute. It's very interesting. So it's more like to form the little ice crystal in the upper atmosphere, and we can go even uh, more. We can far. We can go even far in the uh, future articles. We can study its impact on the air pollution. It is actually very interesting. So, besides, I want to say that later we found that on the ice surface, if there is another vacancy, the neighbor uh, water molecule will be very likely to form another vacancy. So this phenomenon comes out. It's like a domino effect. One uh, falls down and the other falls down together. So the melting temperature is increased. The result is like this. If we summarize a little bit, the first point is that on the ice surface, the formation energy is changing very uh, vigorously. The reason is that we have a local electro field and uh, the electro field will be different with different water molecules. So on the ice surface, it's more like a Simon bed, which you have used for a very long time. And the springs are placed in a very disorderly manner. It's not a new bed. For the new bed, the springs are all erecting up, and you sleep on that uh, very comfortably. But if you used it for a very long time, the springs were broken and uh, unevenly distributed. So for this reason, the vacancies on the surface are even uh, more than you think. This is the reason of the uh, paramounting uh, of the experiment. So for the third step, we take a step further. If uh, there are different local electron fields, if we have another water molecule, will it have an impact on its absorption? This is a reverse uh, a process. We want to see how the ice is growing. Ice is very beautiful. We read uh, a book uh, written by a Japanese person, and he says uh, the the ice knows the not the ice will tell you many things. So I grew up in a very cold city, and in my childhood, the story was very interesting without much explanation. In the evening, you know, uh, at 4 o'clock every day, uh, the sky goes dark, so we can see the snowflakes and ices on the window. We know how the uh, growth is with the ice, and we can touch the ice with our fingers to change its uh, uh, f formation. But we cannot answer the question about the growth of the ice. But for the thing itself, for many years, I have been thinking about it. For the ice, we have uh, many forms. But how is it formed? And nobody asked about this question. And this is uh, very important related to other topics. So we just put a water molecule on the surface of the ice. Uh, can we study it? Uh, sometimes we cannot study it very clearly. We can put it in different places and use different mathematical methods to calculate, but the deviation is very big. So later, I think, can we put a water molecule on the ice surface? It is uh, the closest uh, uh, water molecule, and is it enough? Because it's such a big difference, would there be a difference on the methods or on the physics uh, model? It is incorrect. So. I've been thinking about this issue, and this is another thesis from uh, female students with all this different kind of service, make a calculation like that on the absorption. And it was quite surprising with the order parameter, this is still a big difference. 
So with the previous experience, we think that there could have been an effect of the local electric field with the uh, water dipole, if it's going to be the same direction, it will be a high absorption. If it's irregular, then you have a low absorption. So naturally, you've been thinking about if this is a kind of ice floor with one water particle to run randomly, where does it stop? It will stop like that, definitely. And this is what uh, we imagine. And second is that we make some detail uh, making and on the local electric field with a kind of a long range at least there will be a kind of a 10 amp strong and then becomes a little bit stabilized and this is already uh, exceeding our electric field so on those early works why is such a kind of a big difference because you did not have good consideration on your physics models and then we're not uh, going to spend some time, but generally, it is the order parameter to affect the uh, absorption via the electric field. We have also have another kind of experiment, and this is on the side view of the surface of the eyes all the way to the body, and on top, I threw some of the water molecules like that, 13 of them on the surface, and this is on the top view all of the water particles, uh, molecules on the surface with a uh, height like that coming to the surface with uh, 50K with um, 2 Ns, nanoseconds. Then where did they stop? A few spots like that after equilibration. This is the, the strongest part of the local electric field. So it so depends. Uh, with our theory or the hypothesis. Other than the water particles on the eye surface, what about the other molecules? One example is the uh, hydrogen sulfide. As you can see, these are the same order with the order parameters on the surface of the ice. Once you throw it, you can estimate the distribution. So again, on the local electric field, not only on the water molecules, but also on such other um, polar molecules. In fact, the work will give you some inspiration that how the ice grows bigger and bigger, and then they're looking for the strongest local uh, electric field. If you have a kind of regular with a cross line or a certain pattern, on top of the line with the uh, local electric field and then the water molecule were based on this with this kind of a controlled growth and that is going to be in interesting so this is approximately my presentation like that uh, what did I tell also the order parameter the order parameter is a very unique and sensitive way to describe the proton ordering on the eye surface and uh, then you can tell that it will, in reaction of the water or as a kind of molecular absorption on the key row, together with the desorption on the ice surface. So I like this quote, simple things done right. You don't have to do something uh, more complicated. So we're doing some simple things and that will be good. I really acknowledge my two students, two very outstanding and smart students. And this is uh, Sun Zaru. She is still carrying on the research. Uh, Panding is also doing a great job. This is my long-term collaborators, very outstanding partners. And I wish City University a 30th anniversary.